Amen. And amen. Put your Bibles in your hand. Make this bold and powerful declaration. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today, I will be taught the word of faith. I will hear, understand, and do the word of faith. I have a pastor anointed to teach me the word of faith. I will follow my pastor as my pastor follows Christ. Amen. You may be saved. Amen. Amen. It's an old song that my pastor, Dr. George Bryant, used to say. It's an old song. He said, I don't know what I do without the Lord. this word. I know God wants to bless you um, through his word. I don't want to ever hype you. Hype never produced manifestation. You know, cheerleaders produce hype. When people are telling you what you can do, what you ought to do, a lot of times they don't care whether it's truth or lie. It's all about the hype, the energy they put out. But you must understand that no matter how hype you are, you cannot produce no more than who you are. Amen. If you change who you are, then you'll understand, you know, the hype and, and what it really can do for you. Amen. One thing I've learned, and this is, again, you know, I've been studying a lot of science and coordinating it with the Holy Spirit. Scientists say the energy you put in something is what you'll get back. And when something is important to you, you don't touch it until you have the right energy. It's better for something to sit and go stale than you to touch it with the wrong energy. I hope you understand what I'm saying. You say, well, that sounds like procrastination. No, it doesn't. Because you have to learn how to keep the right energy. No matter what the project is, if you come with the right energy, science say, science. Now, you know, already know how I feel about the Holy Ghost. But scientists say there's something in the universe that lines up that you can produce your, your, the ultimate level of potential if you come with the right energy. Science say that. Just the right energy. We as the children of God know what that is. For what measure you measure out, that's the measure coming back. Right. So, so we understand that we cannot be a dead people, but we must, we must make sure we're, we're approaching our destiny with the right energy. Amen. You understand that? Amen. You must have the right mind if you're going to really love God and carry out his assignments. Right. Let's get into the word of God. Uh, Psalms 119, verse 57. You know, I love Psalm 119. You find a lot of things there. A lot of things there that, you know, you can't overlook. It's just, it's there. You have to address it. And uh, we're not going to try to cover all of it, but there are certain things that we need to address 
if we're going to reach our full potential. You know, the deacon says something that all of us have greatness in us, but do you know you can kill your own greatness just by the level of energy? No, really, you can you can have the greatness of a race car engine, yet you you putt putting around like a three cylinder Geo Metro. I don't even know they don't make that no more. You know that uh, what the other something the uh, car they had? They said it wasn't even safe for the highway. Ford used to make a spiral. You were, you were riding around like a little old spiral, and you're supposed to be an 18 wheel. Your energy will determine your output. So you can do everything right, but if you got the wrong mindset, it's going to affect your output toward it. If you have a business, no matter what you're doing with that business, I don't care if you chewing bubble gum and, and sticking it on a bottle. You know, who, who you going to sell it to, I don't know. You understand? But I got to chew the gum with the right energy. I hope you get what I'm saying. I got to put it on the bottle with the right energy. I can't be like, oh, my goodness. I, I forgot to let me get up and get this done. No, no. You got to have the right energy. Don't approach anything that's important to you with the wrong energy. You understand? It? Right. Keep the right energy. So you say, where do I get the energy from? It starts in your mind. Right. How you feel about a thing. And you have to get yourself because sometimes we are overwhelmed. Yeah. You don't put forth your best foot when you're tired. True. You know that, right? You don't. You don't. You're not putting forth your best effort. And this is why, you know, when you start studying self-made millionaires, they start talking about the morning, the morning and how vital it is. Not only does it shape the rest of your day, but you give your best at it. You're refreshed. You're rejuvenated. So sometimes when you wake up and you know, well, you know what you're working on, you want to you want to give it your best, your, your, your full attention. Not the app I get back from work attention. Now there's some things you can do rope dog. You know what I mean? I used to, this is the truth, y'all ain't got to believe me. I know y'all say he's too deep for me, but it's all right. I, I never, I, my mama taught me how to cook. And I understood a long time ago, cooking, we never cooked by ingredients. She made cookies by, you know, the measurement and all that. She did that to a, to a certain degree. But I always knew cooking was just about the seasoning and how much of that seasoning flavor you want on the food. You know, you know, every every piece of meat, whatever you're cooking, it, it's all varies. I understood that, that logic. And uh, I remember when I used to want to, to, to cook, and I would say, I would say, God, you have to give me something that's going to be good because I really am not a cook. This is not what I do. And I remember being in the kitchen with the right energy. And, I, you know, my kids, they ain't going to lie when it comes to food. They, they will hurt your feelings. And, uh, and I'm telling you, man, I, I would make some of my best dishes more because of my purpose and the energy I would put in. Now, now, if you don't know how to cook, you don't know the basics, it don't matter how much energy you got. You know, you just, you know, no, I'm serious. I, I've seen people make uh, some uh, honey barbecue wings, and they have white wings with hot sauce on them. And she said, when I bring them out, I'm going to put the honey on them. <laughs> yeah. That's why I don't understand why, you, why they got milk poured on the head to get food from certain people. I mean, why would you do that? You know what I mean? These are the, these, these, I mean, I just don't, the, the, the logic behind fighting to get something that ain't worth half. Can you imagine standing in the line, getting hoes and dogs sick on you for buffalo wings, no seasoning, just hot sauce, and when they come out, they go smear some honey on it. Some of y'all say, well, what's wrong with that? Just, just keep on marching. Keep on. Keep on. I, I, never, I never understood it. You know, you know, I was uh, someone reached out to me and, they, and began to share with me because you know I, I know Martin Luther King is about music. A lot of black children go to school. That's all they know. Martin Luther King. But he began to tell me he was like, well, you know, you, there's some things you need to read, blah blah blah. Because toward Martin Luther King's the end of his life, right. he was saying things that he knew he messed up. Right. That's true. He made one statement. He said, "I believe I led my people into a burning building." You know, he all he all begin to talk about. I don't know if this gonna happen. I don't know. You know, I'm, I'm up against something that ain't gonna change. And and a lot of times 
we get to a place that we think, you know, we ought to have certain things, but you, you may get them, but if you don't put the right energy into it, you're not going to get back what you deserve. If you're going if you're gonna do something for your family, make sure your energy's right. Drink a Red Bull right. before you go in the house. Right. You go in the house, you're tired, you're frustrated, everything aggravates you. Everything. Yeah. The devil will show you everything that's gonna make matters worse. Yes. Right. Don't have no grown kids in the house. Mm -hmm. Grown kids in the house by age. That's all it is. They grown kids by age. That devil will show you all kind of stuff. Now look at this here. Now look at that. No, no, no. Wait a minute. I got so much. No, I'm sure you can't have no joy in your house listening to the devil with grown kids in your house. Let me tell you that. If you got grown kids in your house, you know, if you don't know how to ignore the devil, I'm going to tell you right now, your house is going to be an uproar. I'm telling you. If I come with the wrong energy, my energy is peace, happiness, love, joy. You know what I'm saying? I don't care about it. They're doing wrong, you know, you know them being my friend. That's not, that's not my purpose in life, you know what I mean? To make my kids my friend. All right? That's not it. So I'm not talking about that. But I'm talking about you come with the right energy that I come to keep peace, love, and all this other stuff. And it navigates you. It, put, it puts you in a frame of mind. You can overlook some stuff. You understand? If you get to the place you got the wrong energy, you'll be fighting fights you should be ignoring. Because I'm frustrated, I'm aggravated, I'm annoyed. And therefore, I'm, I'm going to tell somebody. Sometimes you got to get to the place to understand, if I'm going to grow in God, then therefore I must have the right energy so that God can speak to me and I move. Now, when it comes to hearing and obeying God, not only do we need to have the right energy, but the enthusiasm. you got to be ecstatic that he, he chose you. Most people won't serve God unless the conditions are right. You know, there's, well, there's a fight that, that's going to take place April 22nd between Javante Davis and uh, Ryan Garcia. And, they, you know, the, the negotiations kept falling apart because everybody wasn't getting their needs, wasn't getting what they wanted. There's another big fight of uh, Errol Spence and uh, boy Terrence Crawford. That fight can't get made because the, the negotiations. You know how many of y'all can't do nothing for God because the negotiations ain't? Some of y'all have told them this. I'm telling you right now, I need to get paid up front. And you want 10%, I'm going to tell you right now what you're going to give me before you get a dime. He said, that's my money. It's in my pocket, ain't it? And you reach for it, you're going to catch these hands. <laughs> yeah, people, people tell God up front. No, let me tell you what you're going to do if you want me to do that. I've heard preachers talk like that. I heard one time I heard Jesse DePlantis talk about a conversation he had with God. And I said to God, you never talk to me like that. You know, I'm serious. This is not, I'm not, this is not tea. This is something he said on TV. That's how I know it. He said God told him to go somewhere. He told God he ain't going unless he got his own plane. And God said, okay, I'll give you a plane. Then God asked him what kind of plane. God don't talk to me like that. <laughs> God don't talk to me. God, listen, God laid on my heart, right? That I had to get a farm, which we're going to buy. So the, the project that we're working on to buy the farm, because the farm you don't buy with payments, unless you're a farm. you got to pay cash for that, because that land won't sit there, you understand, until we talk Stephen Holden and come and plow the land. You understand? All right. So so the deal we're working on, we lost $100,000 on the deal, and we ain't did nothing. We were just Christians, loving the Lord. No, just over the phone. Like, how this happen, man? This, now, now, but God told me to buy the phone. Right? Now, now I'm going to buy the phone, and you taking money like this. You can't buy no phone with crap. Let me tell you something. If you, if you hear from God, God instruct you to do something, don't look and seize the opportunity on why I can't get it done. Right, right. Now, this become my faith fight. I want to show you something. Because if you're giving God a dilemma on what you got to have, then you're saying, I ain't willing to fight for it. I'm not fighting the good fight of faith. God told me to buy a farm. I done lost $100,000 just by waking up. I should have stayed asleep. <laughs> Till matters change. Well, my faith fight become for me to get the farm at any expense. Not for me to say, oh, well, 
God, well, you're going to you're gonna have to make up the loss. See, your faith fight, you can't make that a contingency to do what God tells you to do. Right. Nobody tell them about you lost your job. What did God tell you to do? Don't nobody tell them about they ain't offering overtime no more. What did God tell you to do? Amen. So you got to get to the point now that if I'm going to obey God, I got to have the passion, the zeal to get it done. I can't gravitate to an excuse that I can't get done, done now, God. Look what you did. Look what you did. I'm serving you, and they left me. I'm serving you, the car break down. I'm serving Not Never think what's happening is for you to fall back on your assignment. We all gonna go through something. And instead of you gravitating to a bunch of lies about your life gonna be better, gravitate to the truth. You implement those things, and your life is gonna be made better. Amen. People love to be lied to. I remember one time. I don't, I don't wanna put a name out there. I don't want nobody, you know, nobody getting hurt. <laughs> we was in the men's fellowship. And, and this gentleman said, he said, women like to be lied to. Oh, how would you say that? <laughs> no, but let me tell you something. Just think about that thing for a while. You go, some things when your wife asks you a question. I ain't talking about no foolishness. She all happy and ecstatic about that hairstyle. And when she asks you, how it look? I don't think you should kill the move. You know what I'm saying? But I don't uh, Oh, did you got a receipt for that? <laughs> Can you take it back? That's going to change the whole... See, and I, and I, not nobody here, but the other church down the street. Sometimes a wife would ask how you like it. You can talk about how you love it, how the people on the job love it. You done got 50 compliments just walking up the driveway. Then you ask me, how do I like it? Now, either I can kill all the joy in this house or lie. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead and say it. That's the worst house that I've ever seen. You Where do you get this from? <laughs> go get my gun and, sh and point to the beauty. I'll blow up the salon. Child, I'm telling you something, that's going to be that's gonna be a mood shift. Yeah, I know I'm talking about something. Did you put any salt on the chicken? I put cyanide on it. Eat up. <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead and tell us to look at that mirror and, and be talking about something. Oh my goodness, I'm, I'm, I'm picking up some weight. Go ahead, you sure is. All right. <laughs> well, that's going to be a rough night for you, brother. You know what I'm saying? Listen to me, listen to me. You know, church folk is like that. They just want to hear that your, your, your tomorrow going to be better. No matter what you're going to do, God's going to bring you out. He's going to turn it around. Yeah. He said, yes. Yeah. Your dumb self jumping and shouting, knowing ain't nothing going to turn around. You win or you don't win, man. You win. Now you're going to get evicted. And you're sitting up there thinking, well, stop that foolishness. They had the preacher, the preacher that got robbed, the church got robbed. They said the man had, I don't know, I don't know what's wrong with y'all. You people. He had he had his business reported that it was worth ten million dollars or something like that. Two million, Another. ten million? How much? Another. Eleven million dollars. That's one of his members right there. <laughs> Eleven million dollars. <laughs> when they got finished auditing this guy and, and checking all his books, he worth ten dollars. Not ten dollars. <laughs> Talk about a stretch. <laughs> He wearing all this Gucci and Fendi and all that stuff, and you worth ten dollars? No wonder you stealing the people's money. <laughs> that, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You got to get to the place that I'm going to please God to the point that whatever He tells me, I'm going to have the right energy to get it done. I will not embrace an excuse to fall back. All right. Psalm one nineteen verse fifty seven. Yeah, what did I say? 119, start at 57. I want to show you something here. I want you to get this. When God speaks to you, you got to be moving swift, as if it's of great urgency. You do not procrastinate 
once you've heard from God. You know, the anointing opens up your ears and your heart that you hear what God wants you to do and you're compelled to get it done. That's what the anointing. When you hear the anointing destroy the yoke, that's not people passing out on the floor. Child, the power of God hit. Nobody could stand up. I bet you touch one of the apostles instead of woke up. He would be in the spirit where you touch that power. Oh, hey, hey. People passing out, falling out, and all that stuff. That's not the anointing. The anointing is God gives somebody a word from him. Usually it's a rhema word. Even though it's a universal word, it becomes a rhema word to you. You know immediately what you need to do. Not only do you understand, but you feel like I got you got an urgency on the inside to get it done. Now look at this. I want you to hear this. You are my portion, Lord. I have promised to obey your words. Come on. I have sought your face with all my heart. Be gracious to me according to your promise. Come on. I have considered my ways and have turned my steps to your statutes. I'm changing that. I'm changing. The longer you've been doing something, the bigger that boat comes until it's no longer a boat and become a ship. Ships don't turn like speedboats. You can run into something and run back out. But when you run into something and keep the course a long time, it starts to grow. It becomes an iniquity. An iniquity is something that starts to grow on you so much, it becomes a way of life. I will hasten and not delay. I will hate. I hurry up and not, and not delay to obey your commands. This is not the Ten Commandments. This is whatever he tells you. Do you know if God gave you a word? If you don't write that word down, the devil will take it before the morning. Before the morning. There is nothing God will. You will have an idea that's worth a billion dollars. Don't write it down. See what happens. Right. See, the moment God gives you a word, you got to act on it. You got to do something. You got to write it down. Thomas, I can't forget this. This is too good. Sit there a while. <laughs> Sit there a while. And just as sure as it came from God, the devil is coming to get you. You be sitting there, I just, oh my God, I thought, man, what was it? Then you go to the Holy Ghost, bring it back. That was one it. You didn't, you, you, you treated it like it was unimportant. God speak, I get moving. I got to write it down, write the vision, make it plain. While you on the move, while people running by, it's clear where you go. It's clear of your purpose. Ain't nobody got to scratch their head and say, I wonder what they're doing. No, no. Let me tell you something. The more you hear and obey, the more he's going to give you. Let me finish it. I, I will hasten. When you speak, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. I get up and I'm writing it down. Because sleep is not more important than what you're telling me. I don't trust myself. That's all I always tell my wife. Write it down. You got to trust your memory. Write it down. You got to trust your memory. If you do it now, you don't have to remember. Now that's something the Holy Spirit got me. I, I can't procrast I can't put nothing off. If I can do it now and I can get it done, and I even encourage my wife, I said, if the opportunity presents itself, just let me do it. Don't tell me to wait for no reason. Unless it's something of urgent. Let me go ahead and get it done. Because then the next thing you know, you go outside and all the tires is flat. You say, Well, I should have did it when, when I had. It. Don't wait. Hasten. God speak, get it done. Something that you can get done, get it done. Stop walking. I'm about to say something. I know y'all think this ain't got nothing to do with, with, with your relationship with God. Stop walking over disorder. If something is on the floor, bend down. There's something in you that, that allows you to overlook what's right and do what you want to do. You got to break that thing in you. Amen. Shoes don't go all over the place. Put them in off. Now, in my house, you know, they, they can't, they don't, well, I, it's my house. So I walk with my shoes on upstairs sometimes. But everybody, when you come to the steps, we'll take your shoes off. So you'll find a bunch of shoes there. People take off their shoes and go upstairs and all this other stuff, blah, blah, blah. But y'all know what I'm talking about. It ain't like, you know, well, I ain't going to say that. Because yesterday, somebody had a boot in the kitchen. Just sitting in the middle of the closet. I, 
No, the devil said, wake them all up. Find out who's shooting it. One of these girls. You wake them up, they won't leave no more shoes up there. Listen to me. I'm just, let's go ahead and 61. I'm going to show you something. I got to move. God speak. I got to move. God tell me something. I got to write it down. I'm going to hasten. I'm going to obey you. Though the wicked bind me with ropes. Though the wicked bind me. I will not forget what you told me. Now, who, who is the wicked? People that have influenced me to be who I am and what I am right now. That's not making me get up and write it down. Do you know you can have a, a certain impact on your child that they would live a, a more disciplined life than if you just let them go free? I don't know. My, my, my wife was down in Georgia. Her grandmother did something to her. She was like, she, she'll make up a bed. You be in there if you want to too long. You're going to go bed. You're going to use the bathroom. You better hurry up. Because by the time you get back, that bed made you. Know what I, did? I, to, I just went there and took a meat. Why are you? Oh, making the bed is a golden rule. Now, if you in it, she might give you a pass. But you go in there, go in there and stop by the mirror if you want to. <laughs> I wonder if I'm losing it anyway. Yeah, that bed made up, brother. You got <laughs> it. Yeah, I mean, listen. There are some things that you can put in your child that will make them a better person. Somebody, young lady, contact me, <clears throat> and she say, um, it is what it is. Don't get upset with me. I get contact with a lot of women talking about why they can't get married. That, that's the truth. A lot of women talking about why can't they? I don't know you, so I can't say that. There's no spiritual reason why you're not married. But I made a statement that my wife was raised, her environment made her a good wife. Everybody don't come from that environment. So what's normal to my wife may not be normal to somebody that's been brought up in a different environment. There are things that you come through, listen to me now, that in your life, in your environment, in the home you were brought up in, that, that become an iniquity, and you forget what God is telling you. Because your mama told you, don't you ever let no man tell you what to do. Because I had 50 of them. And they all did me dirty. So don't you let them do you dirty. No, no, mama. No, I'm going to humble myself. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to put, a, put something out. I really want to get a good understanding on what do women think is a high quality man. Because that's what they all want. High quality. And I always thought, well, what is high quality? You know, everybody got a different definition, so it can't be wrong. It's just what it is to you. And some of y'all say, well, you know what I mean? You got to have green eyes. All right, then. You know what I mean? I'm not going to fight you. You know what I mean? Somebody, whatever you call high quality. But, but, but this is what you got to understand. If your mama raised you to be an independent woman, don't need a man, you, the chance of you getting a high quality one, based off the average definition, is going to be slim to none. You say, well, I don't like that. It don't matter what you like. They got this cartoon. I don't like my grandson listening to it. I don't like my granddaughter listening to it. The girls be wanting to play the guys in football. And they keep saying, whatever you could do, we could do it better. That's a lie. You're a woman. Don't lie. No, no, I know that. Now, here's the thing. Now, you know, women won't jump on me. You know what I'm saying? I told you, don't, don't think I'm, I, I'm not a sexist. <laughs> I will not discriminate. All right? You're a woman. God made you a certain way. You can't do everything a man can do. And you shouldn't try. So if your mama raised you to be a man, you know what I mean now. Don't get stupid. The, the chances of you getting a high quality man. You know, let me tell y'all some number one things high quality men want. A woman that's caring. A nurse. Did you believe that? Y'all thought, thought it was a round butt, didn't you? You was about to go join the membership. What did you do in your squats and all this stuff? Work on your glutes and your newts and your roots and all that other stuff? No! Karen! Somebody that's going to nurture me, take care of me. Can you believe that? And y'all out there in the gym, spending all that money at the planet fitness. Working out, sweat. Some of y'all just walk in and walk out. I see. I see. Walk in, use the bathroom, come out. They talk about stuff. Hey, no. <laughs> Go back in 
there. Mm-hmm. Well, y'all trying to get a six pack? Y'all doing jumping jacks and all this other stuff? And the man want to know if he start coughing and choke that you ain't sitting up there on your phone. <laughs> you know, it's a joke when you make. You may say he wanted somebody in his tw- in their twenties. I said, you make. What are you gonna do with that? <laughs> Not old you get. You think this to me, man? You old enough to the point you need to be looking at somebody that knows the signs of a stroke, a heart. Out. Come on now. You don't need no young girl up there twerking, and you do it. <laughs>
when you're a person of wisdom, when you speak, only fools are upset. Those that are wise love to hear your voice. See, see men are not men. And you know, you know, you know, some of them try to ride on, well, y'all want 50 50. Y'all want to be equal. Well, you know, what I mean? whatever works in your marriage, I'm not trying to tell nobody how to budget their money. But I am saying that if you want a certain life, you got to make sure I don't have no ropes binding me up that prevents me from getting there. I told my wife, I'm not considered um, a romance guy. That's not what I am. You know, I don't do, you know, one day. Like Valentine's Day is just the most corniest day that society make you express yourself. I, I, my expressions is lifelong. For, for, for not just for a day or two days. All your life, I'm going to make sure you're not overworked. All your life, it, I'm going to be helping you cook or I'm going to make sure we're going to eat but you ain't going to be cooking. All your life and whatever you are, uh, look good in, I'm going to make sure you have all your life. So, so see, here's the thing and I told her, you get guys that you know, the girls are so excited because of uh, Valentine's Day but they got to they gotta wait a whole nother year. Whole nother year. No, I, I'm trying to tell this guy um, a couple of weeks ago, I was telling him, I said, man, this here, do you know you can buy flowers three times a year and it's, it'll, be, it'll be cheaper than if you buy them on Valentine's Day. Well, I went to go get the pizza at, at, uh, on Super Bowl Sunday. I went to get the pizza, guy standing there with a half a dozen of roses. Now, I'm not thinking Valentine's Day is in a couple of days. So I pull over, I said, my man, how much you want for them roses? He said, $35. No, no, just the ones you got in your hand. Six roses? $35? Oh, the devil is a lie. You can break that up throughout the year. No, nah, man, I ain't made no $35 for no Valentine's Day. It's just an expensive moment. I said an expensive moment. Now, some of y'all, that's all you got. Take what you can. Don't be, don't be rolling the dice. One bird in the hand is better than two in the bush. We'll be going home talking about something. I don't want nothing for Valentine's Day. I went, he goes, well, you won't get nothing at all. <laughs> now you sitting up there boo -hooing. No, I, listen, I know what I want, and then I make sure there's no ropes holding me back. You want a man to give you attention, but then you're not willing to do nothing when he gives you his opinion about it. You don't pay me no attention. When I do pay you attention, you still do what you want to do. I told you I don't like that. And you still win. Well, see, it, th there's a rope there to keep you from having the relationship you want. If you want my opinion, if you want my attention, don't ignore me when I give it. Right. Right. I didn't think it would get that bad, like that quick, right here, like that. <laughs> Listen to me. Listen to me. When God makes you aware of something that's keeping you from His best, you got to do something about it. Some of you poor right now because you don't move on ideas wisdom gave you. True. Move slow and you're just dragging. You don't get stuff done. I'm going to tell you the truth. This is God's own truth. I was looking at notes. This The first book I wrote, I was looking at notes 2017. 2017, I was still writing notes. Now, I'm not buying, I'm not buying, I'm not writing a book and begging people to buy it. That's not who I am. That's not who I am at all. Now, I'm going to share something. Now, I'm not telling you this before you go by the book. That's not what I, I want to tell you so you got to be motivated. In that time span, and nobody come around to pat me on the back. Hey, did you write anything today? How's it going? Listen to me. If you need everybody patting you on the back and saying good stuff, you might not get much done. It's not that now you know the greatest, the, the people that benefit the most is my grandchildren. They're going to benefit the most from the book. Because, you know what I mean, they, I got more wisdom, I got more money, they're they going to benefit the book. But, my wife going to benefit. My wife made me come home every day and tell myself, hey, how'd the book go? I even told her, y'all ain't got no, you know the kids, they got no interest in this book. Blah, blah, this was years ago. And guess what? I just kept on going. You can't, you know, it ain't got to, it don't mean they want me to fail. Man, I don't like to live. It ain't like in your book. Listen to me. Stop 
trying to add more problems to what you need to do to be a success. You don't need people to encourage you. If you got them, great. But if you don't have them, that's not something to stop you. You don't stop working because ain't nobody told you uh, you're doing a good job. What's wrong with you? Well, I'm just going to go ahead and eat three hamburgers. Now, ain't nobody, nobody said I lost any weight. So I'm just going to go ahead and eat hamburgers and three fries and, and milkshake and apple pie. No, baby, you need to have a dream. You need to have a goal you want to reach. And you cannot keep making up excuses not to keep pushing. When God speaks to you, it's not something you need to warm up to. Because you know a lot of y'all don't move until you feel it. Like the ocean that hit you, this is how most of y'all going to die. Physically die. Because the Spirit of God will fall on you. We need to start exercising. Who? When? Now get your butt up right now and start doing some squats. Because good, if you want to live long, you have to eat healthy, you have to do healthy things, you have to walk, you have to do something. And society is making people more physically complacent than they ever have. So you get the notion, we need, we need to lose some weight. We need to do some exercise. We need to go for a walk. Get your butt up and go downstairs and come back up. And then, and then once you know that you need to be more physical, you don't complain that you got to go up the stairs. You thank the man, hey, I need this exercise. Let me get on up here. Put your hands on your thighs and soup yourself up. Who I know I'm going to burn 10 pounds. <laughs> no, you got to move. If you don't move, nothing's going to happen for you. When God tells you to do something, God gives you an option to better your life, get on it right then. Because you know the devil talk you out of stuff. The devil say, you know what? Now I'm telling you, one, you can't say. That's why you ain't got the mic. You can't sing. But you got this song. And the devil will say, wait, 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 calm down. It was just a moment. It's just a little moment. It just, just, just relax now. You don't need to be talking about you want to present it to the choir. Just chill. And then you go back home and, and forget about the song. You didn't even write it down and none of the stuff. Because the devil done talked you out of it. Because first of all, I ain't even on the praise thing. So how am I going to bring us up? Listen to me. Listen to me. When God speaks, move. Do something. Don't sit idle. Don't trust your mental capacity to remember. Last verse. Matthew 6 and 33. This is, uh, no, 6 and 31. This is something you got to understand. If you learn how to put God first, whenever he gives you an idea, you don't become money hungry. You don't need to come money hungry. Just do what he tells you to do. Right. My whole, my whole um, foundation of the wealth we got from our trucking company was all founded. It started with uh, Brother Bowles. And Brother Bowles brought me in on his business. And we was trying to help him out and stuff. And he was helping me. And I learned so much from him. Man, that guy, let me tell you something. That guy can fit a couch inside of a sardine can. He can pack a truck. And I learned, I learned the trucking business from him. And then from the trucking business, it moved into getting our own business. It was never about money. It was always about helping somebody. Now, our trucking business has made more money than most people were making in their lifetime. That's just the truth. But it was never about money. See, when God made you a certain way, you can do some things and accomplish some things that will blow your mind. You know, I wasn't here for that. This is not why I'm here. I, I didn't do this because I wanted to live this life. I'm doing it because I felt led. God, now look at this. This is what you got to understand. Because God, God's going to use you. He's going to develop. Let's read this. So do, do not work, worry saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? Simply meaning how you live, how you're going to present yourself toward the world. Because when you see certain clothing on people, you immediately attach that to a certain lifestyle. You know, people pull up to your house to deliver. They meet. I, I learned that mistake. We, you deliver at these nice big houses. You think that's going to be a hundred dollar tip? The child, they say, thank you. You know, you saw look as outward things you can look at that gives a certain perception. Don't worry about the perception you're going to give the people. All right? For the pagans 
run after these things. Or the Gentiles, the unsaved, those that's after worldly things. They chasing after the, the look, the image. Because the car you drive is going to present a certain image. Don't lie to yourself. I know you say a car's a car. A car's a car when you want to get from point A to point B. But a car is not a car depending on what you're looking for. If you're looking for comfort, I wouldn't recommend what they call that Wrangler. They say that Wrangler look nice. People buying is the rough and riding truck you can get in. Yeah, back problems and everything. No, no. If you if you got an option, I recommend you get your Escalade or something nice and comfortable before you get that Wrangler. It depends on what you're looking for. God said, no matter what it is, leave that to me. The world wants that. I don't want you wanting that. Now I'm about to say something. I hope you get this. God is saying, don't come to me looking for stuff. Don't come to me begging me for clothes, food, housing. Don't look. This is what I want you to do. Go ahead, next verse. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You know, righteousness is right standing with God. God tell you something and you do it according to how he tells you. If you miss this, you're going to miss a whole lot. You understand me? Listen to me carefully. The righteousness of God, hear from God, and obey God. You must do it God's way. You can come to church as much as you want. You can sing as much as you want, dance as much as you want. If you don't do it God's way, you're going to miss it. So God said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. See, when God speaks to you, tells you to do something for him, not equated to money. Oh my God, if y'all get this, I'm telling you, it's going to change your life. If God tells you to go buy a farm, don't look to get rich from it. Just look to obey him. My joy got to be in obeying him, not how much I can get for a cow. Especially when it comes to doing good for other people. You can't buy a house for somebody else to live in and God put you out on the street. You can't not let me tell you something. There are certain things God will tell you to do. When you do it, he opens up avenues for you to, your mind to be blown. That now what you eat, what you wear, told him. That's why I'm never surprised when I catch stuff on clearance. I've heard preachers say, well, you know, certain schools don't have clearance. I don't go in them. I don't go in them things. I bought my kids some coats. This is God's own truth. I bought them some coats. One of their coats got a tracking device in it. That's how, that's how expensive they coat. A track, I'm not lying to you. A tracking device. Well, you say, well, <clears throat> you say, well, you know, that money could go somewhere else. No, 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 no. No, no. I didn't ask for that. To be honest, the people in the store sent it to me, saying, bro, well, you're online. Telling me what they was offering. You cannot go after stuff. God said, I'll have stuff to go after you. And now, I don't know, my kids are embarrassed about it, but anything you see us with, it come off clearance. And then you walk around here like them pay a thousand dollars in your shoes. Yeah, if I go, I don't know what they do. Because Alice is a shoe guru. <laughs> I don't know what she do with her money. But if they tell you they daddy bought it, you know it came from clearance. I don't care. They can say no. You ain't got to tell me what. Clarence. <laughs> no, I ain't, right. ain't nobody buying a three thousand dollar jacket. Clarence, if it's is it Clarence, and sometimes you order it and you don't get it because it's Clarence. The man can send you back an email here. We ain't got no more of him. You want something else? No, listen to me. If you do it God's way, you ain't got to worry about nothing else. I promise you. You cannot obey God and fail. You cannot want to do everything God's way. Solve every problem the way God tells you. And I'm telling you, God said, I'll add these things to you. You can't be mad at me talking about what I got. I got people that just don't like me because of stuff that I got that means nothing to me. Don't make no sense to hate. I can give you something to hate. Trust me, what I put on Facebook ain't what I got. That's the toothpick. But I can show you a tree. Now, to get you upset, make you suicidal. <laughs> Don't look at my 
my wife car. I'm telling you, that's not what I'm about. I have it, but it don't have me. You gods, I'll do the same thing. When my, what, what I want to do through you become more important than what you wear, where you live, I'll open up the windows. I'll give you whatever you want. Who, who kid is this? Get my dad. You got to trust me on this. You got to believe God on this. Find out what God wants you to do for Him and let Him take care of everything else. Good jobs ain't gonna cut it. Because with God, it comes with a health plan. A good job will give you money. But if that, if that can't guarantee you no cure for cancer. I'm telling you, do it, God. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for your children. They come to this place to get more from you. I pray, God, that they have ears to hear and a heart to move. They would hasten and do what you've commanded. Saving your life. You held back the blessings of God in the children of God's lives by us procrastinating and moving slow. As of this day, I break every chain, every lying delusion that we've sat on, that we 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 laid in that caused us not to move when God speaks. God, if you have your way in us, we'll give you the glory. We'll give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.